young ones and musical lover, welcome to Tiffany Young Outfit. We all know our Queen Tiffany Young is currently doing musical Chicago as Roxy Hart. So, today's video is all you need to know about what Chicago is. Without further ado, let's get into it. The musical Chicago is the longest running American musical in Broadway history. It has been performed 9,690 times in 24 years and has won 55 trophies as the world's most prestigious award shows, such as Tony Awards. Chicago was first brought to South Korea on December 8, 2000, and has been running for nearly 21 years. It has been the most popular Korean musical for 20 years and has been performed 1,146 times. Chicago is an American musical with music by John Kander, lyrics by Fred Ebb, and book by Ebb and Bob Fosse. Set in Chicago in the Jazz Age, the musical based on a 1926 play of the same name by reporter Maureen Dallas Watkins about the actual criminals and the crimes on which she reported. Ladies and gentlemen, you are about to see a story of murder, greed, corruption, violence, exploitation, adultery, and treachery. All the things we hold near and dear to our hearts. Thank you. In 1924, Roxy Hart saw the star Felma Kelly perform at the Chicago Theater. Wanting to become a star herself, Roxy has an affair with Fred Kesley, who claims to know the manager. After the show, Felma was arrested for killing her husband, Charlie, and sister, Veronica, who were sleeping together. A month later, Fred confesses to Roxy that he has no connections and only wants her body. In Raj, Roxy shoots Fred to death. Roxy convinces her husband Amos Hart to take responsibility, telling him that Roxy killed a robber in self-defense. When Amos confesses to detectives, Roxy fantasizes that she is singing a song devoted to her husband. Fred Casely. Fred Casely? How could he be a burglar? My wife knows him. He sold us our furniture. However, when detectives brought evidence that Roxy and Fred were having an affair, Amos rechanted his confession. Roxy angrily admits what really happened and is arrested. Harrison, an ambitious district attorney, announces that he will seek the death penalty for Roxy. At the Cook County Jail, Roxy is taken to murderous row under the supervision of the corrupt matron Mama Morton. Roxy meets her idol, Velma, but Roxy is rejected out of hand by Velma. Roxy begins to learn about the past stories of other female prisoners there, including Velma Kelly. Makes you unhappy in any way. Don't shoot your fat ass mouth off to me because I don't give a shit. Now move it out. They say that life is 
at Mama's suggestion, Roxy hires Velma's attorney, Billy Flynn, who is smart. Billy and Roxy take advantage of the journalist, reinventing Roxy's identity as a virtuous woman turned ugly by practical city life. Roxy later confesses that she was having an affair with Fred because Amos is always working. But she repents and dumps Fred for Amos. Then Fred gets jealous and attacks Roxy. Journalists believed Roxy's story and was praised by the public as a tragic hero so that Roxy became an overnight sensation. displeased at losing the public's attention, tries to convince Roxy to join her, replacing her sister who was killed. My sister and I had an act that couldn't fly. My sister and I were headed straight for the top. My sister and I earned a vow, a week at least. Oh yeah. But my sister is now unfortunately deceased. I know it's sad, of course, but a fact is still a fact. And now all that remains is the remains of a perfect double act. Watch this. So what do you think? But Roxy, now more famous, insults Velma just as Velma did with Roxy.
Meanwhile, Kitty Baxter, a wealthy heiress, is arrested for murdering her husband and two mistresses, and the reporters and Billy pay more attention to her. To Filma's surprise, Roxy quickly stole her fame back by confessing that she was pregnant. To create more sympathy for Roxy, Billy convinces Amos that the child is Fred's child and that he should divorce Roxy in the midst of his predicament. Laugh? Why would they laugh? Because they can count. Can you count? September. Here's a copy of Roxy's first statement from the DA's office. It says she hadn't copulated with you for four months prior to the incident. Well, sh she would know. Yeah, I guess we hadn't done no copulating since... Wait a minute. That don't figure out right. I, I couldn't be the father. Well, forget about that now. My client needs your support. You mean she needs a meal ticket? That's all I ever been, but this time she's gone too far. What are you gonna do? Divorce her. You're damn right! Roxy's trial begins and Billy turns it into a media spectacle with the help of sensational newspaper reporter and radio broadcaster Mary Sunshine. Billy denounces witnesses, manipulates evidence, and even stages a public reconciliation between Amos and Roxy when Roxy informs him that the child belongs to Amos. The trial seemed to be going Roxy's way until Velma appeared with Roxy's diary and read incriminating things in exchange for pardon in her own case. Billy denounces Roxy's diary and implies that Harrison is the one who placed the evidence in Roxy's case. Roxy was released, but her fame was lost moments later when another woman, who also shot her own husband, shot her lawyer outside the courthouse. Billy tells Roxy to accept it and admits that Billy tampered with Roxy's diary for himself and incriminated the district attorney and also freed two of his clients at once. Amos remains loyal and happy to be a father, but Roxy cruelly rejects him, revealing that she is not pregnant, and in the end, Amos leaves Roxy. Roxy was a vaudeville player, but she wasn't successful. Velma was equally unsuccessful as a vaudeville player, and again, she approached Roxy and suggested appearing together as the two assassins. Ladies and gentlemen, the Chicago Theater is proud to announce a first. The first time anywhere there's been an act of this nature. Not only one little lady, but two, you've read about them in the papers, and now here they are, Chicago's own killer dealers, those scintillating sinners, Roxy Hart and Val McKelly. You can like the life you're living, you can live the life you like, you can mess around with Ike and that's good isn't it grand isn't it great isn't it swell isn't it fun isn't it but nothing stays in 50 years or so it's gonna change you know but oh, it's heaven Now what day? Okay, you babes of jazz, let's pick up the pace Let's make the parties longer, let's make the skirts shorter Let's all go to hell in a fast car and keep it hot <laughs> <laughs> 